Today, we're gonna laminate the cut water. Now, not only am I gonna laminate it, I'm gonna laminate it right in place, and I'm gonna glue it down all at the same time. The cut water is gonna extend from that splice that I put in the runner at the bottom, and all the way to the head of the stem. It's a hangover and cut off situation at the top, but on the bottom, you have to match it up to that scarf, so. And you know, I tried to make a decision about this, try to bed it down with some kind of bedding and have glue in between. Uh -uh. I decided I'm just gonna glue the thing on from bottom all the way to the top. Well, I've got my stack of laminates over here on my glue table, and uh, I wanna show you about this scarf right here, but they're tapered from two inches to two and three eighths at the top. So that was kind of a neat thing. And uh, the two inches lines right up with the very keel at the bottom. So I'm gonna cut the scarf with electric plane. Let's get going on that. These laminates are very nice white oak laminates and they're seasoned. I cut these off something else I was building quite some time ago and I've been saving them for a purpose just like this. You know, I save a piece quarter of an inch thick and stack them up with some other pieces to keep them flat and later on I can use them for something just like this. Well, let's see how long the scarf ended up here. It's about 20 inches. It's just a touch longer than I need it to be, so I'll probably shorten it up a tiny bit, but uh, it's pretty much done. The thing with it is that I'm doing here that's kind of different is I'm using the planer backwards when I'm making a scarf like this because if you try to go this way, you'll just keep catching on to the ends of these and disintegrating it. And if you turn the plane around backwards, you're kind of planing downhill with the blades. You know, when you use the plane backwards like that, it just works fantastic, really. Rather than going this way and having to go downhill with the plane, I'd rather do it this way, you know, and just use the plane backwards. It comes out smoother, neater, and it's easier. So let's try that. Let's check that out. Nineteen inches. There's multiple purposes to have this cut water because you want the boat to be narrower than you see it right now. It's you know two inches broad or maybe a little tiny bit over, but usually in a sea, especially going towards the weather, that broadness will actually cause a spray that sprays up over the gunnel. So you know we don't want that. We want it to be nice and narrow. And also, it's, it's nice and firm, being laminated, so it's a protective piece at the very bow end of the boat. We're getting ready to glue up the laminates for the cut water right here. We're using Total Boat 2 to 1 high performance epoxy resin with the medium hardener. And uh, I've always loved two to one mix because it's easier to mix it up. You can mix it by weight or by volume or anything. It's much more accurate than trying to mix five to one epoxy like this. We're also using their mixing cups because the calibrations are really easy to understand. And I've always wanted to put the epoxy in first and the hardener in afterwards. And that's the way these cups work. We're using two to one. So we're on the two to one scale. And uh, the first two on that two to one is two parts. Right, so I'm going to put two parts of resin in there, and then I'm going to fill it with hardener up to the next two on that scale. So that's two, two, and the next two is one. So it's two to one, basically, is what you got on that scale. And uh, I like mixing two to one more so than any other one because it's easier, it's accurate, it's more accurate than a five to one. The first thing we're going to do is mix in some epoxy primer thinner 200 because we want to thin it out and get it to soak into the wood real nice so you know I thin it quite a bit maybe more so than some people might recommend but I've never had any problems the thinner flashes out of it and it leaves the glue nice and soaked into the wood so I'm going to prime each side of the laminate and I'm going to make sure that I cover them so I paint it down from one end to the other and then I go over it kind of like a trowel and I've got these bristles cut right off the brush right here because that moves the epoxy really easy. 
I got to keep them coordinated still so I don't mix them up. So what I do is I prime one side, then I flip it over and prime the other side, and then prime the next side of the next one and flip it over. And then when I go to put the thickened glue on there, I do the same thing in reverse. It's just a technique that I've learned to do without making the laminates or taking the laminates anywhere or having any problem you know, coordinating them afterwards. There's already a hole to coordinate the laminates when I stack them back up. Once I've got each laminate primed on both sides, I'm going to make another mix. I'm going to mix up the same kind of glue, but instead of thinning it, I'm going to thicken it. I'm going to thicken it to the point where I can just barely pour it. And I don't want it like seeping over the side of the laminates and all those kinds of things. It's just try to control it by making it a little bit thicker. And uh, I guess it holds the laminates apart to a certain degree so it doesn't starve the glue line. You know, there's all kinds of opinions about all that stuff, but you want to uh, err on the side of caution here and use plenty of glue is what you want to do. The trowel I'm using is one of those four-sided tooth trowels, and I just cut it right down the middle with a razor knife and snap it. Uh, I don't want it to be any wider than the laminates, really. That makes it really difficult to control the glue. Some might question why we're laminating this thing at all. It would be very difficult to either steam a nice piece and take all that time and then try to bend it around there and have trouble with it. Sometimes you've got to go through that process a couple times. You know, we know this is going to bend right around there. Individually, each piece is very flexible. So even a pile of it bends quite easily. It comes out really nice and solid, the finished product right here. It's much better than any other way to go about it. Even a sawn out piece, you're going to have grain going across the stem cap and all this kinds of stuff. You know, it's a new world, we use epoxy. We're moving right along here with the thickened epoxy. You know, we're just taking the stack that had already been glued with the thin epoxy and spreading the thick on it and restacking them the way they belong. The only thing I didn't anticipate is the, is the epoxy kind of melts the uh, magic marker line, but that, that still it worked out fine. I added two extra laminates here. They're on the outside of the pile, so they're mostly going to be cut right off. Those are the ones that you might have seen with a few imperfections in them, but they're just down there to spread the load, really. Epoxies have actually opened up a lot of possibilities in bolt work because there was never any glue anywhere near as good as this. So laminates have come into just about everything. This boat has a laminated stem, cut water, it has a laminated transom, it has a laminated bottom, you know, composite laminated bottom really. And uh, you know, it's still got a very traditional look about it. And it is a wooden boat, but we've taken advantage of the best aspects, you know. And, uh, you know, glue and laminates is one of them. And uh, we coordinated them with that same hole that I drilled from the top. You know, I took the nail and slid the laminates back and forth until the nail would go down the hole. Look how nice that scarf looks. Now, that's identical in length to the scarf that I've got on the boat. The very feathered ends are just stuck down with wet epoxy. You know, they used to pop up and down when we were cutting it, but once you spread that glue on there, it's, it's almost impossible to get them apart. It's got like a vacuum to it or something like that. So then what I did was I put a nail down the hole and then slid the thing across the bench, hanging over the end of the bench and drilled a hole from underneath because uh, I need to have the head of the nail on the bottom of this laminate pile, not on this side. Well, now I'm applying some glue to the very bow end here. And uh, I want it on there thick enough so that we can see it squeeze out on both sides when we push the laminates up there. They're all going up at the same time, all the laminates. Yeah, I'm going to go over this just a couple times because I want it to soak into that end grain there. But there's plenty of glue here. All right, now I'm going to get down here. We're getting closer. I didn't tape it. Fuck it. Can't put too much on there. Spread some glue on the scarf here. There's going to be a lot of glue squeezing out of this, but that's okay. So here we go. We're moving our cut water into place here. It's like a big noodle, really, without getting a spot on my beautiful vest. <laughs> I've got it teetering over this box. It's like balanced. Well, the middle of it is controlled over that box. So I can go down to the scoffed end and coordinate the position of it just the way I want it. I've still got the nail in there that coordinates the laminates with each other, right? And, uh, you know, I didn't, I could have started out with a little prop made of a 2 by 4 or something like that. But, uh, you know, I didn't want to be able to put it in on an angle right away. So I used a jack. And then I put clamps across because these laminates are 2 inches wide and that piece I'm gluing onto is 2 inches wide. 
and it's been put on the boat straight. So all I have to do is put a couple clamps across and it coordinates those laminates absolutely perfect. Once I get that accomplished, I can bend the laminates around and prop them up with some temporary props. Once I've got it bent up forward a little bit, I want to go back and inspect the scarf to make sure that I've got it in the right position exactly. And I also have to put clamps on the side of it to line it up with the other piece. And then I'm going to put a, like a, a, a scrap of wood underneath it, actually just a piece of plywood, and uh, put the jack under that, push up on that. And wow, look at the glue come out of those laminates, I mean. You know there's no starved glue lines in there. It's just working out perfectly well. The laminates are lined right up with that keel piece on the bottom, and that kind of helps me as I wrap it around up forward so that I've got it heading in the right direction and everything. Well, I'm clamping the very top of the laminate. It's not real hard, but I want to hold it up there while I'm propping or screwing the rest of it in place. So, you know, that's what I've done. Now I'm going to take and put a prop in this right here. I've got to be careful not to put too many props in it because if I do, it'll lift the boat right off the ground. I'm putting a number of clamps across to coordinate those laminates. They don't clamp the laminates to the boat. All they do is coordinate them to each other. That way I can scrape the glue off the side and make sure that the laminate pile is lined up with the boat the way I want it. I started out with a few hydraulic jacks right down at the end down there because they're adjustable. And then I cut some pieces of two by four and just propped them in there. You know, and as you get forward here, because of the angle of the stem up here, you have a hard time with props. They keep slipping out. So I put a couple clamps across so it just butts up against the clamp there. You know, without that two by six, I would have had an awful hard time because the props would not grab on the floor. So I've set that thing down there for a base for the prop. I am going to drill some holes and put some screws in here, but it's really uh, important that I get them right in the middle. And I can't say that this is on center, so I can't use the center of this. I have to use the plank, and I'm going to make a little gauge that goes around there real quick, like, and uh, makes it so that we can tell right where the center of the stem is, not the center of this. So what I'm going to use is this little gauge I made up out of a piece of scrap wood, really. And it just projects the angle of the side up to the middle of the stem. And I use it from one side, and then I make a little mark, and then I use it from the other side. So between the two marks, whether they don't get to each other or whether they overlap each other, it doesn't matter. In between the two marks is the center, right? So when you drill a hole in there, you've got it nice and centered on the boat itself. It might look a little off on the top laminate, but that doesn't mean anything. It's the boat that matters. So when I trim it off, what I'll see then is the hole right in the middle, and then I can re-drill it and put brown screws in it. So I'm going to use temporary fastenings to fasten this all together, like construction screws, because, you know, they go in a hole, it's not tapered, you know, we're not drilling a plug hole or doing anything like that. And we put some washers on there to spread the load a little bit. What I don't want to have happen is have a, like a tapered screw head, because I could tighten it up in there and split the laminates on the outside. So, you know, like I say, these things are temporary. Once it's dry, we just back those things right out. They don't, you know, resist at all out they come, then I can whittle the thing down. I've made every effort to get those screws to end up in the very center of the cut water. They're not in the center of the outside laminate, but I bet you they're in the center of the cut water. Well, there's our cut water glued right on. We've got some sticks propping it up there because I didn't want to put screws at the bottom. We've got a few hydraulic jacks in it that we finally took out, and we've got some screws dead center. I used a little gauge to find the center. So I've got it screwed on there temporarily. The next thing we're gonna do is put the guards on. I know I've been keep threatening to put them on there, but we're putting them on there. You know, we're ready to go with that, so that's our next move. I can't wait to do it, because that's what really makes the boat look nice, is the guards on it. You know, it accents the shape of the boat, and uh, it accents me too, because I, I can't wait to get it done and get the breast hook in it and all those kinds of things. So, you know, stay with us.